So this is the dual rotor axial flux wind turbine we made in video 2035 and it performed actually really well. But there's a slight issue with it and the slight issue is hidden in the construction. So when the wind hits this turbine, of course it will turn at its full speed extracting energy, which means when it hits the second turbine, some of that energy has been removed. So inevitably, this blade will spin slower than this blade. If we have a look at the actual generator section itself, the generator section is really two flat rings of magnets arranged north-south across the coil in the centre. And of course, when they change, that's where we get generation from. But if they're actually rotating at different speeds, one or two things can happen. Now with this, I've only locked those together using the magnetic field, a bit like magnetic gears. So they can actually turn independently. If there's enough force, what we'll get is slip. So instead of there being north-south, there'll be a period of time when north-north and south-south are facing each other, and of course, generation will drop off. And you might think, though, what we could do is just lock them together to prevent that happening, and yes, you could. If you did that, however, the second blade, which is spinning slowly, is going to act a bit like a sea anchor. It's going to act on drag, slowing the whole thing down. So that issue is what's hidden in this particular turbine, and the question is, what to do about it? Well, it might be that the answer is this thing. This is a spur gear differential that we made in video 2307. I've taken the handle off, and I've got this extra long output shaft right there, because remember, differentials can either split power or combine power. So what we can do is we can put our wind turbine blade here where a wheel would go and here where a wheel would go. Then when the wind hits that blade, it'll turn at its full speed. This one will turn at a slower speed, but this will add those together and output it here as combined. And so we won't get that sea anchor effect. Of course, to do that, what I did was turn to Tinkercad to redraw the bits that we need. And the basic bit that we need are a plate to fit there and a hub to fit on that plate. So we put them together like that. And then obviously, put the wind turbine blades in. Now, the research on these dual rotor wind turbines is pretty extensive. If you want to have a look for yourself, go to Google Scholar and you'll find a ton of research papers showing that you do get an improvement in output set against cost that apparently is pretty good. Now, to attach these, what I've done is I've made 10 of these little pegs. The pegs go in the flange there so they're jerking out a little bit. These two flanges made up and then there's some clips to hold those in place. But you end up with something like that. Then we do the next side and we have our dual rotor turbine with a spur differential in between. Now the research says that the distance between the two rotors should be a quarter of the diameter of the swept area and that's the best distance to have it. So let's get this other one attached and that's what you get. Now for the last three days, we haven't had a breath of wind and we haven't got any wind today. So it's a shame. I would have liked to have tried that in real world conditions, but we'll have to wait for a bit of wind to do that. However, we haven't used any new concepts. Differentials are known to behave that way. The dual rotor is known to be an improvement. And if we hold our model and hold one of these still and turn it, we still get power on the output shaft and exactly the same if we hold that still and turn it, power on the output shaft. And if we turn them together, power on the output shaft. So it should work. We'll test it and we'll see if it's actually going to work. But there you go. A dual rotor wind turbine with differential in between to take account of the problem that we talked about. Now, as a complete aside, because I, I've got an idea what people will say. People who want to comment on things like, oh, it's PLA, so it'll never last in real world conditions. Oh, that's too fragile, they'll split. There's too much friction in the mechanism. All of that is very valid if this was the final version, because it's not. What I'm doing is working out ideas with models and prototypes and saving myself an absolute fortune, because you never get it right 
first time. That's where the value of doing this sort of stuff comes in. You can work out your ideas. There's another thing, of course. This is not a quarter of the diameter here because I used a model I made previously. What I need to do, if it works, is shrink everything down, stick in some bearings, of course. But I wanted to show you the idea. I wanted to show you the model build. I wanted to explain why I've been so interested in differentials of late. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching, and please do remember to like and subscribe.